Good morning, guys. I'm uh, just about recovered from training. It's uh, Wednesday after. We had an awesome event with about 10 people from uh, all over the U.S. Um, really, really good training. I was, uh, was pretty excited to meet everybody and um, got them to some neat sites. A lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting people from all around the country that have a lot of different needs. So, I mean, I think we've got probably four or five different kits for different you know, to meet different needs. We had a guy, um, you know, from down in uh, Austin experiencing the concrete cancer debacle with all the gunite pools. And uh, we've got a pretty uh, good solution, I think, for him that's gonna be good for the other 20 plus thousand people with bad pools uh, down there. And I'm gonna flip this around, kind of give you a quick walk around to progress. We, uh, we topped out the walls the day before training started back last, uh, about a week ago. They've got most of the uh, Zont and Zuckles, the bracing on. We've got a we got the Trimco 160 on the foundation, and uh, we can't put the brick ledge on. And I, I'll, I'll tell you something, guys, about brick ledge block that I'm usually not a fan of in the Ozarks because our uh, ground is so undulating and rolling that you know when you have to step it down 16 inches at a time, it generally doesn't work out very well. I probably could have gotten away with using it on this house because the entire front of the house will be graded at one level. So could have done it, um, but it didn't. And so now we got to put in cinder block, uh, four inch cinder block after the fact. But because of that, we won't need to use any dimple board because usually we will do Trimco 160 and then put dimple board on it. We'll bring the fast foot back up onto there and tape it to our waterproofing and go over the edge of it so it's completely uh, broken from the ground moisture. That said, um, we won't need the dimple board because the, um, the brick ledge will kind of act as the same thing. It'll protect the ICF from impacts of rocks and stuff during the backfill and also give us kind of an area that will have an ability to weep if moisture gets in there. So we'll do that as soon as we pour the walls because my boys went ahead and put all the uh, stiff backs on the Zaunts and they go down to the ground here and don't allow us enough room to put our brick ledge, which is totally fine. I do think that I have um, pulled an audible on pouring all of this at once. It's not a done deal that I'm not gonna do it, but Austin is um, going to be in charge of all the flat work in here. And he wants, we're getting into fall and the temperatures are a lot cooler. And he wants to be able to pour very, very early in the morning. And if I pour all of these walls first, um, that you're talking about about 110 yards in the walls, counting the garage. And if I do that first, which is what we would wanna do so we're not splattering all over the flat work on the top of the wall, you know, we will have to pour probably no earlier than 10 or 11 in the morning. And they will be finishing late into the evening in these temperatures. Even if we put calcium in it, it's just, a uh, you know, it's a long day for them. So probably what we're gonna do is we are digging the pool today and tomorrow, <clears throat> which is gonna go right out here past the patio. We're gonna dig the pool, get the floor right, and then we will pour the walls of this house next week whenever, I'll tell you in a second, a mistake that we made that we're waiting to fix. And then we're gonna pour the walls for the house and the garage, and we will pour the pool floor. Then, I'll let Austin and the guys come in here. I will get my walls set on my pool and I will pour all the floors, patio and the pool walls. And then we will be pretty far ahead. We'll be ready for all the framing. We'll go up to the second story on the ICF where, where it exists and um, should be great. Uh, so that's kind of the process we've, uh, we've come to. Today we're going to get into uh, laying the heat sheet heavy and uh, we're gonna start the hydronic system. There's a pretty giant debate happening between the engineers and um, the, the different HVAC guys working in here. Um, this was designed with a heat and cool um, hydronic system, and there is some vigorous debate going on, which I kind of enjoy, getting a lot of experts' opinions, and they're uh, differing greatly in our high humidity climate about bothering to use the cooling system and what the point would be. So we may be nixing that. The decision um, is gonna be made by some pretty smart people and the homeowner who's also very smart uh, today. 
because um, one thing I'll tell you about this, this homeowner, a uh, reason I took this job was one, the location, it's so close to, you guys that have been in my training know my shop is just over that ridge. My house is just that way a couple miles and uh, my warehouse is about four miles behind me. So it couldn't be a more perfect location between everything I do. And the other thing is this homeowner is um, at least trades adjacent. He owns an electric company and a bunch of other things. His uh, decision making is very, very fast uh, for when we have a change, when we have something. It's uh, generally made almost on the fly. He just takes all the information from everybody that knows what they're talking about and he decides quickly. So we are able to flow really nicely. The one mistake we've made so far, and it was just ignorance, um, is these bucks here, which I absolutely love this element buck. Um, it's just a really, really smart buck um, that we will, you know, it inserts in here. It's got a little keyway and then, uh, it has, it's, it's a really, really nice buck, but when I ordered the material for this house, I thought I really messed up. I ended up with seven bags of buck, which is like 128 feet. And I need like 700 feet plus. So I, uh, I was kind of confused as to how that happened. I thought maybe the semi was full and they just shorted the order. So I looked back and um, my rep that has helped me get started with elements is awesome but I think just on the fly, I actually told him I needed 700 linear feet and maybe he thought I was talking square feet or something, but he goes, okay, that's seven bags. And I didn't press it because I just didn't know what they came, how they came bundled. So I was like, okay, I need seven bags, but I actually needed like, you know, 25 bags. It will be here sometime next week. I cannot pour until they come. And uh, after today, that's basically what we'll be waiting on on the house is that I only have enough uh, buck material to do, you know, probably these front windows and that's about it. So I've got a lot of buck I'm waiting on to, to complete the project and then I can brace up the window openings and pour. But anyway, guys, um, it's looking great. I'll probably, uh, before the video ends, I'll show you what the foam looks like laid out and then hopefully by the weekend, I can actually show you uh, maybe the hydronic system that's going in once we finalize a couple of the changes and maybe I'll have the pool dug out and I can just show you a cool progress video. Do have a couple um, couple more review videos coming up. I'm still gonna do Nudura. I think I'm gonna do TF Systems. And one of my trainees is actually a uh, big uh, proponent of Perfect Block, which you know I've been somewhat confused about, um, you know, kind of the point of some of it. But I uh, she's supposed to be sending me some of it and I'm going to do kind of an in-depth deep dive into uh, kind of a diverging technology there. So I'll give you my thoughts on it. But um, the exciting parts of this is now that training's over and uh, my boys are flowing really good, we're gonna get the heat sheet laid out. Now uh, the plumber has another change to make first thing this morning, which as soon as he's out of my way, we're gonna roll with the, uh, with the heat sheet. So stay tuned. All right, so boys just got done with an eight hour day. They got some of the uh, walk planks up. We're using the TGIs for the second floor. They make excellent walk planks when you have them available. But check it out. We've got all of the heat sheet HD or the heat sheet heavy. Um, these are uh, the pucks are laid out on four inch centers on this stuff. So our, most of our hydronic is on eight inch centers. You can see the area where we use the regular non-pucked heat sheet right here. This is kind of where the, uh, what you call the trunk lines or all the service lines that run to each different zone lays. And so it's on like two inch centers here. They don't really make a puck for that. So we, uh, tomorrow morning I gotta go to the supply house and get a bunch of uh, five by 10 wire mesh to just lay on the ground. So I have something to tie it to, to keep it organized. We also have to insulate those portions because they're so close together that they were gonna overheat the parts of the floor there and make it, you know, different than the rest of the structure. So. Um, we also have a secondary manifold system feeding the bedrooms. So kind of right here in the laundry area, um, you see it's flat too. So all those will go down this hall. Again, they'll be insulated and they just kind of feed into the office or the, I think it's office or library and then the, the master suite. And uh, they're still, the only part they haven't laid is the, um, the patio area with the ice melt system, but they've redesigned that to where I don't have to run the trunk lines underneath this stuff. It's just uh, 
there's a uh, manifold under the stairs and uh, it will feed the ice melt outside. So I don't have any runs underneath the heat sheet, which is handy. And real quick before I let you go, I'll have a really cool video Friday. I'll fly the drone, do some other stuff. Probably also shoot one of my last few review videos. But Doogie's over here. He's murdering a tree right now. But you can see he started our pool. We laid it out for him today. Goes over right about there, out to the skid steer, and then right past those trees there and back. 20 by 40 pool, four foot to eight foot deep, and it's two foot below this patio to start. So there's stairs going down to it to get it into grade. But um, guys, this, is, uh, this project's coming together. We've burned through almost all of our supplies, which is by design. So we're actually starting to have some breathing room. They're gonna to top out the walls on the garage tomorrow, so I should have a really cool video for you Sunday. I'm gonna get into the waterproofing and give you some more uh, updates and stuff, but uh, it's, uh, it's almost ready to pour. As soon as our buck material comes in, we're set. So see you guys next weekend.